What is going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your fifth tutorial in HTML5 and in this tutorial I'm going to be talking about some styling using CSS and also the new version of CSS called CSS3. However, I want to mention this first. As you notice, I ripped all the stuff out of the body and that's because I know we have a bunch of more tags to go over, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be teaching you guys about styling and then I'm going to be going over the new tags and I'm going to show you guys how you can use them in conjunction to do some pretty brilliant things. But first, I need to talk to you guys about styling so we got that down pat. So let me go ahead and actually I want to add some stuff that we can style so I'm just gonna go ahead and add like three paragraphs and what can I write in these paragraphs let me just go ahead and copy these first paste paste in the first one I'll just write OMG WTF barbecue with a question mark and in the second one I'll write hi my name is spunky wasn't that the dog in Rocco's Martin life I don't know. And in the last one, we're all right. I love string cheese with a question mark because hey, why not make it a question? Now, actually, what I like to do is I like to test everything out first, like OCD style, and it looks good so far. So now, since we have this main.css file and we didn't create it yet, let's go ahead and take care of that problem right now. So if we go to File, New, we can just go ahead and save this blank file as, and make sure you save it in the same directory as your main.html file. Just save it as main, and for some reason I like to use the drop down menu, main.css, and save it. So now we have our main CSS file, and we can go ahead and move that back. So let's go ahead and add some styles to this. Now I'm going to be talking to you guys about the old CSS, reminding you guys about a few things, and showing you guys how the new version of CSS has improved. So remember, in the old version of CSS, we could have things called IDs. Now if we have an ID called Tuna, we can go ahead and apply a style to this, for example. Anything with the ID name of Tuna would be colored red. So if we take this first paragraph and set the ID equal to Tuna and save, hopefully when I refresh, that first paragraph, since it has the ID of Tuna, now has red font. Now we can also work with something called classes. Now classes are kind of similar but they're a little bit different. I won't get into the specifics but basically you can also have a class of tuna and what I like to do is I actually like to change the color to make sure that you know just make sure that we can see a difference and we aren't just you know accidentally not refreshing or something. So if we have a class of tuna and I messed something up and that would be because I wrote class instead of tuna. Now if I save it I'm gonna go ahead and refresh it and as you can see whenever you have a class this can also apply styles to any element that has the class name that you defined. Now aside from that I'm only going to be talking about one last thing and that is that you can have something like this p.tuna and what this is telling CSS is basically I want to apply this style right here to anything that has the tuna class but it has to be a paragraph so if you had something I don't know like in a span or something and it had the class of tuna but it wasn't in a paragraph then it wouldn't be affected so if you go ahead and save both of those and refresh you can see that since this first one is a paragraph and it also has the class name of tuna then that's why it turns blue now you're saying okay I knew all that this is nothing new well that is all the old stuff with the old CSS and it also gets applied to the new CSS however CSS3 also comes with this cool extra stuff and that's what I'm going to be talking to you guys about now. Not only do you have the option of ID in class, but you also have something called attribute selectors and it's basically a new way that you can reference elements. For example, you can have something that looks like this. P and have the attribute in there called name. Now whenever you do this, basically any paragraph with the attribute name is going to get affected. So if you look at this, if you look at these three paragraphs, this one has the attribute class and these two don't have any attributes whatsoever. So if we go ahead and refresh this, we see that nothing turns blue. 
However, if we give this second one a name, and it doesn't matter what you set it equal to, set it equal to Larry or something, you can go ahead and save that and refresh and check it out. Now, since that second paragraph has an attribute called name, even though it doesn't matter what it's set equal to, what value it is, it gets affected. And that's what we tell it right here. In the new version of CSS, CSS3, we can use something called attribute selectors. So basically, any paragraph with attribute of name gets affected. Now if you want to take things up notch and you say, okay, I actually do want to set that equal to anything with attribute of name whose value is equal to Bucky. So let's go ahead and set this third one equal to Bucky and we might as well give this first one a name and we'll set it equal to Sally. So now even though all of these have names, only one of them has the value of Bucky which is the last one. So let's go ahead and save that and refresh and see only the last one turns blue. So that's kind of the beauty of CSS3. We can work with something called attribute selectors and what happens in that case is basically you reference an element by any attribute whether the attribute alone or the attribute with a given value and I know that I'm using name in a paragraph and a value of Bucky but this can be any attribute it doesn't only have to be name and also any element not only a paragraph so I guess since I have time I want to talk to you guys about one more thing and that's using regular expressions in CSS3 so let me go ahead and change the name equal to let me think of some good examples okay bacon sub and yes I actually okay one second my bacon and OMG bacon tuna <laughs> so I actually did pick those names for a specific reason and you're gonna see later on so basically in CSS3 you can use something called regular expressions and you guys may know about regular expressions from before but basically it's a way that I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys an example. It's really hard to explain. But you can have something called name and then the caret sign. I think that's called the caret sign. It's a symbol above the six on your keyboard. And what you can do is set this equal to a string called bacon. Now, whenever you set this equal to bacon, what this little caret means is any value beginning with bacon and it doesn't matter what it ends in such as the example of bacon sub as long as your value starts with the word bacon then it's going to be affected so let's go ahead and refresh this and we can see that the first paragraph gets affected because the value of this is baking something it can even even be bacon alone and it would be affected as long as it starts with bacon now that's what the caret means you also have some other regular expressions one is the dollar sign and what the dollar sign means is anything that ends with bacon is going to get affected so let's go ahead and refresh this and we see that okay the second paragraph is affected why is that because did bacon sub end with bacon no and ended with sub did my bacon end with bacon yep bacon right there did omg bacon tuna end with bacon nope tuna was the last thing and that's pretty much how it goes if bacon is in the beginning or the middle it doesn't get affected it only gets affected when it's the last substring of that string so the last one I want to talk to you guys about even though there are a bunch of regular expressions is the asterisk which is above the 8 on your keyboard now what the asterisk means is as long as the string bacon is anywhere in the value it's gonna get affected so let's go ahead and refresh this and we can see that all of these get affected or get affected whether it's in the beginning whether it's at the end whether it's in the middle or even if you had just bacon alone like that and I save this and refresh it that would get affected as well as long as it has bacon somewhere in the value it would work out so I know regular expressions are kind of a topic more related to programming other than web development and to be honest you guys aren't going to use this feature all that much in web development you guys are probably gonna stick with the basics and keep it simple but uh, I wanted to show you guys that and I want to show you guys some of the powerful tools that we have when working with CSS3. So that's a little taste of that. In the next tutorial, we're going to be going over more CSS3, more styling, and then I'm going to show you guys how to tie everything together. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.